A very good evening. You are watching Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Smriti Rastogi with news tonight. Let's begin the bulletin with the top headlines. Wrong policies of Congress have kept Karnataka farmers in debt, says Prime Minister Modi at a rally in Tumkur, alleges poor understanding between Congress and JDS. Rahul Gandhi claims Prime Minister's actions don't match his words. Two suicide attacks by militants foiled in Srinagar, three terrorists killed in Chattabal area, four security personnel injured in the encounter. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu leaves on his first international tour. Week-long trip to three Latin American countries will start with visit to Guatemala, followed by Panama and Peru. Talks to improve bilateral relations, agreements on the agenda. Time and place set for historic U.S. summit with North Korea, says American President Donald Trump. Tweets fail to reveal the details. Trump and South Korean President Moon Jae-in to meet at White House on May 22nd for talks on Korean Peninsula. And NASA's Mars mission InSight lifts off from California, will reach Red Planet on November 26th. Multi-million dollar project will attempt to expand knowledge about interior conditions ahead of eventual human missions. Let's begin with all the news and updates from the pole-bound state of Karnataka. Campaigning is on with full swing in Karnataka. Political leaders for various parties are working overtime to win over voters in the election-bound state. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed no less than four rallies on Saturday. He hit out at the ruling Congress on its governance record and what he called a tactic alliance between the Congress and the JDS. As election campaigning gains momentum in Karnataka, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Saturday held four back-to-back -back rallies in the states Tumkur, Gadag, Shimoga and Mangaluru districts. Greeting people in Kannar in Tumkur, the Prime Minister said that the Congress government is preventing resources allocated under the Smart Cities project to transform the region from reaching the people. Tumkurina Jantege Nana Namaskar Galu. Prime Minister Modi also hit out at the Congress and JDS, calling them a tactic alliance. He accused the Sidaramaya government of ignoring the poor and the farmers in the state, saying the Congress only talked about poverty eradication to Ghana votes. Sapse a big samai Congress ne raj kiya. उसमें भी एक ही परिवार ने राज किया आपने ऐसा क्या किया कि मेरे देश का किसान कर्ज में डूब गया उसको आत्महत्या करने के लिए मजबूर होना पड़ा Addressing people in Gadag, Prime Minister Modi predicted that after the Karnataka elections the Congress will be reduced to being what he called PPP Congress और पंजाब पुडुचेरी एंड परिवार कांग्रेस कर्नाटक की कांग्रेस सरकार ने मंत्रियों ने नेताओं ने यहां एक बहुत बड़ा टैंक बनाया है टैंक उस टैंक में से लोगों को लूट करके कुछ पैसे घर ला जाते हैं कुछ पैसे टैंक में डालते हैं उस टैंक से दिल्ली तक पाइपलाइन लगाई है सीधा पैसा दिल्ली पहुंचता है अगर सरकार गई अगर सरकार गई तो ये टैंक के पैसे कहां से आएंगे ही सेड दैट द स्टेट कैन ओनली बेनिफिट फ्रॉम अ चेंज ऑफ द गार्ड इन स्टेट प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी आल्सो एम्फेसाइज द नीड टू लिंक रिवर्स टू इंप्रूव इरिगेशन इन द स्टेट ही प्रपोज्ड लिंकिंग हिमवती एंड नेत्रावती रिवर्स टू सप्लाई वाटर टू तुमरुक एंड द सराउंडिंग एट डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी
Meanwhile, the BJP President Amit Shah is also campaigning extensively in Karnataka. Shah held road shows in five assembly seats, including Periyapattan and Varuna. Local party candidates were also present with Amit Shah in all the road shows, attacking the state Congress government. He said it has lost interest in the betterment of the people. Claiming that the BJP will form the next government in the state, Shah said that the BJP alone can bring about rapid development there. And with just a week left for the elections in Karnataka, a political war of words is heating up in the state. Congress President Rahul Gandhi has accused the BJP of giving tickets to those allegedly involved in corruption, including its chief ministerial candidate B.S. Yadurappa and the Raddi brothers. Congress Chief Minister Sidharamaya also targeted BJP over corruption. In a series of tweets, he said that he was glad that Prime Minister had made corruption an election issue in the state. In the opposition and we have given them a free hand to achieve anything that they promised the nation they've achieved nothing two crore jobs were promised instead we've seen job losses economic growth was promised we've seen the GDP go down by 2.2 percent everything that they actually promised they've been able, unable to achieve naturally people will be tired of them why would the Congress suffer they cannot keep on recycling lines from five years ago and hope it'll work again and talking about Mandya, the district is known as the sugar bowl of Karnataka. But farmers are upset over growing debt which, uh, and they have decided to revive a farmer movement in the run-up to the assembly elections on 12th of May. Considered the epicentre of Karnataka's farmer movement, Mandya has seen about 200 farmers committing suicide in the last two years. Grief overcomes Puttama every time her son Narayanapa is mentioned. Unable to pay off his debt, the 48-year-old farmer from Pandapur village committed suicide. Naranapa had taken a loan of 4 lakh rupees from banks and money lenders. But lack of rains destroyed the crops. Mandya district is the sugar bowl of Karnataka. With abundant irrigation from River Kaveri and the Krishnarad Sagar Dam, it was once home to rich farmers who had the wherewithal to survive the vagaries of weather. But in the last three years, Mandya has been swept by a spate of farmer suicides. Mounting debt, crop losses and delayed payment by sugar factories have left the farmers nothing but debts. वो किसानों को बहुत समस्या है उसको वो पानी नहीं है बारिश नहीं है वो मेरा ये किसान करने का वो पैसा नहीं आएगा ना आत्महत्या कर दिया ना कर्नाटक में बहुत पानी है नहीं और शादी करने को पैसे नहीं है वो बेटी का और मेरा ये घर से मेरा गांव से ये सब किसान को बहुत मुश्किल है। The state government's decision to waive 8,165 crore rupees worth of farm loans taken from cooperative banks did not include public sector nationalised banks. The state government's loan waiver has triggered a war of words between the Congress and the BJP, with the Congress government insisting that loans taken from public sector banks be waived off by the centre. What Siddharamayzi government did it, number one, waived the loan on the advice of the Congress President Rahul Gandhiji, 8,125 crores waived, 50,000 from the cooperative banks, each farmer, about 22 lakh farmers of Karnataka benefited. When cruel years of drought faced by the Karnataka state, what has central government has done? There is no question about the fact that this government of Mr. Siddharamaya has had a very lackadaisical, lazy, uh, almost bordering on apathetic approach towards problems of the farmers. They have, uh, in a sense, he has been, in a sense, silent bystander. More than 90% of the district's population is engaged in agriculture and is dependent on rainfall and water reserves. The water scarcity has reduced sugarcane production by over 70%, adding to farmers' woes. Monthly income of an average farming family in Karnataka 
is around 9,000 rupees. But the outstanding loan touches 97,000 rupees. Distressed farmers are forced to take extreme steps. Elections will come and go. Parties will win or lose. But this issue needs immediate attention. Reporting from Madhya, with camera person Yogi Shagarwal, I'm Kriti Mishra for Rajya Sabha Television. Old Mysuru consists of areas that came under the erstwhile Mysuru Kingdom. The region has traditionally been the battle turf between the Congress and the JTS. The BJP is also trying to make inroads in this Vokaliga bastion, looking to cross the halfway mark on its own. The old Mysuru region is BJP's focus like never before. The party is holding padyatras almost every day to bolster its fortunes in the 2018 assembly elections here. Bridging this region from where Chief Minister Siddharamaya hails is seen as a challenge for the party. The mission to topple the Congress hinges to a large extent on reaching out to the Vokkaligas, the dominant caste in this region. But BJP says it will focus on its development plank rather than the caste matrix. Traditionally, this old Mysore region is a weak link for BJP. Even during the peak of uh, 2008 assembly election, when we got 110 seats, the entire world Mysore region, uh, in the five districts, out of 33 seats, we got only two seats. This time, for the first time, we will cross double digit. It's a prestige battle for the Congress in the region. The party seeks to re-establish its dominance with several ministers and the fray. Whole Mysore region, 100% we are going to win all the seats. This is what I personally reason is we have done a good job and we are with the people. This is a people sarkar. The JDS poses a formidable challenge to the Congress and the BJP. In the 2013 assembly elections, out of the 61 seats, the Congress won 27, the JDS grabbed 25 and the BJP won 4 seats. Mysore and Cham Mandya um, is a very good Vakalegas and all, all, all other people is there. It's a very good uh, people is there, all JDS. Mysuru Mandya is JDS Prabala Vagi. That's why we have to win the JDS. Seven members is the winning of Mandya. This is four members. It's a, Mandya and Mysore is very powerful of JDS. The Vakaliga people is there. The old Mysuru region, which comprises of Mysore, Mandya, Hassan, Bengaluru Rural, Chamarajanagar, Ramanagaram, Kolar, Chikkabalapur, Kodagu, and Chikamagalur, is the biggest sub region in the state. BJP President Amit Shah has exuded confidence that this region will give the biggest shock to the Congress and the JDS, while these parties have also vowed to preserve their turfs. After most pre-poll surveys have predicted a close contest in Karnataka, experts say that this region will be extremely crucial for the contenders and will play a decisive role in government formation. Reporting from Mysuru, with camera person Yogesh Agarwal, I'm Kruti Mishra for Rajya Sabha Television. And now the news from Jammu and Kashmir, where the security forces foiled two terror attacks on Saturday, killing three lashkar e taiba terrorists in Srinagar. The four-hour long operation at Chattabal area in the outskirts of Srinagar was carried out by a joint team of Jammu and Kashmir police and CRPF's quick action team. Four security personnel were injured in the gunfight, but all of them are said to be stable. The security forces cordoned off an under-construction building in the area following an input that three militants were holed up inside the premises. All three terrorists are killed in the gunfire, besides three AK rifles, a huge quantity of ammunition, including five magazines each, and a medical kit were recovered from the terrorists. This operation started in the morning at 4 in the morning and at the first contact one of our assistant command was injured and thereafter uh, again the contact was established at around 6.15 uh, and this operation continued till 12.30 uh, 12 approximately and uh, in that three militants have been utilized here. Yeah.
And now the news from Uttar Pradesh where the Rashtriya Lok Dal decided to join the united opposition to contest the upcoming bipoles to the two seats against the BJP. RLD spokesperson Anil Dubey told the news agency PTI that an understanding has reached between his party and the Samajwadi party to jointly contest the May 28th by-elections to Kerana Lok Sabha and Noorpur Assembly seats. The announcement was made following a three-hour meeting between RLD Vice President Jayant Chaudhary and Samajwadi Party Chief Akhilesh Yadav in Lucknow on Friday. And with that, time for a very short break. More news and updates on the other side. Keep watching Rajya Sabha TV. And India has a crucial role to play. India is a, the biggest member, the largest member of the Congo. Yeah. And we want Commonwealth more than just a network of people. We want more than, you know, heads of state getting together. How can you be the custodian of what is happening in Syria? We, we have a responsibility to our fellow human beings, no matter where they're living. You know, <coughs> Britain is a very compassionate country. <coughs> we don't attack countries with a view to kill their people. Watch an exclusive interview of Lord Dollar Popat, trade envoy of the British Prime Minister. Saturday 8.30 p.m. and Sunday 9.30 a.m. Only on Rajya Sabha TV. Thanks for being with us. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has left on a three-nation visit to the Latin American countries of Guatemala, Panama and Peru. This is the Vice President first foreign visit after assuming office. During the week-long tour, the Vice President will have over 25 engagements. These include meetings and discussions with presidents, vice presidents and presiding officers of these three countries, delegation-level talks addressing local Indian communities and students of academic institutions, besides visiting historical sites and places. <laughs> The Vice President will first travel to Guatemala on May 6 in what would be the highest level visit from either side. The visit would focus on various areas of mutual cooperation such as protection of wildlife, human resource and training and information technology among others. India has negative trade balance with Guatemala. As far as Guatemala is concerned, they'll be looking at cooperation and training institutes, collaboration there, or in protection and preservation of wildlife. Those are two new areas of interest as far as Guatemala is concerned. The Vice President will then reach Panama on May 7th for the second leg of his visit. Panama was the first Central American nation to establish diplomatic relations with India in 1962. India looks at Panama as a link to Central and Latin American countries as it is a major logistics and financial hub and is known as the Singapore of the region. Panama has the highest presence of Indian diaspora of 15,000. Agriculture, education and economic cooperation will be the key focus areas during the Vice President's discussions with the leadership there. Because Panama is an important hub for logistics, for shipping, uh, for, inf uh, for financing and banking. I think those would be other areas where we would be holding discussions. The third and the final leg of the Vice President's visit will be to Peru. Talks with the leadership there will cover the entire spectrum of bilateral relations, including trade, commerce, investment, IT, medicine, space, defense and culture. India-Peru bilateral trade of about $3 billion is the highest among these three countries. Peru has become the founding member of the International Solar Alliance in the formation of which India has played a lead role. Peru is an important uh, you know, um, uh, country for mining. It is perhaps one of the largest countries for uh, uh, silver, copper, gold, etc. So we will certainly be looking at uh, areas of cooperation in the mining sector, uh, in Ayurveda, in medicinal plants. The Vice President is leading a five-member delegation on his first overseas tour. Akhilesh Suman's report for Raj Sabha TV. On to some more news, Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath on Saturday visited storm-affected villages in Agra district and met the injured victims and survivors. Adityanath cut short his Karnataka visit on Friday night and reached Agra to review arrangements after a freak storm on Wednesday night killed 73 people in the state. He also distributed checks to survivors and members of the bereaved families. 
And India's largest online retailer, Flipkart, is all set to sell more than 70% of its stake to Walmart and Google's parent company, Alphabet. According to reports, the deal will value the company at 20 billion US dollars. The final shareholder agreement is expected to be signed over the weekend, and the formal announcement is due mid next week. While Walmart is expected to get a 55 to 61 percent stake in Flipkart, Alphabet will pick up around 10 percent. Prominent Flipkart investors, Flipkart's co-founder Binny Bansal, New York-based Tiger Global and China's Tencent will retain shares and board seats. Amazon, which was also in the race to acquire a substantial stake in Flipkart, did not find favor from most of the company investors. According to reports, Flipkart's co-founder and executive chairman Sachin Bansal will sell his entire 5.5% stake in the company, which he founded along with Bini Bansal back in 2007. And President Ram Nath Kovind today addressed the 160th Convocation of University of Madras. While addressing students, the President said that the university has been a cornerstone of our nation-building project. He praised Tamil Nadu's culture of research and innovation. He further added that the ability to pursue education as an end in itself, as well as to help fill gaps in day-to-day -day lives of our fellow citizens is commendable. He advised students to carry out learning with humility. Not only to Rashtrapati and therefore... And now the international news, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has reached out to Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the Iran nuclear deal. According to a statement from Netanyahu's media advisor, Netanyahu spoke to three key international leaders, including Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull and British Prime Minister Theresa May, and updated them on the important archival material on the nuclear deal. Earlier this week, Netanyahu had told the media that he would share the archive of more than one lakh documents, which are said to have been obtained by Israel's espionage agency from a Tehran warehouse, which allegedly proves Iran's past secret efforts to assemble nuclear weapons. A U.S. court has sentenced to life imprisonment a Navy veteran for killing Indian engineer Srinivas Kuchibotla in a racially motivated hate crime at a bar in Kansas City last year. The court reportedly sentenced Adam Purinton to nearly 78 years in prison as a part of a plea agreement reached in March. In March this year, Adam Purinton, 52, had pleaded guilty to the charges of murdering Kuchibotla. Get out of my country, Purinton had shouted before firing shots at Srinivas Kuchibotla and his friend who were at a bar in Kansas City on February 22, 2017. Kuchibotla died after he was taken to a hospital while his friend Alok was injured. Purinton was charged with first-degree murder of Kuchibotla and two counts of attempted first-degree murder in the shootings of his friend. And U.S. President Donald Trump has said that he will meet his South Korean counterpart Moon Jae-in at the White House on May 22nd. In the meeting, the South Korean president would brief Trump on his recent summit meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The meeting is scheduled ahead of Trump's meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The U.S. president also said that the date and location have been set for the meeting with Kim Jong-un and that the details would be announced soon. The White House has said that the historic summit with the Asian leader could take place this month as long as uh, North Korea made certain concessions. Media reports say that ahead of the summit, North Korea would release three Americans held as prisoners. We're having uh, very substantive talks with North Korea. And a lot of things have already happened with respect to the hostages. And I think you're going to see very good things. As I said yesterday, stay tuned. I think you're going to be seeing very, very good things. And also, the trip is being scheduled. We now have a date and we have a location. We'll be announcing it soon. And NASA launched a space probe on Saturday on a mission to study Mars. The probe will help fill large gaps in scientists' understanding of the planet's geological structure, composition and seismic activity. Here's a report. American Space Agency, NASA, launched its latest mission to Mars. 
inside took off at 4.34 p.m. Indian time from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. It will be the first probe to focus its investigations on the interior of the Red Planet. The spacecraft will take over six months to travel 300 million miles to reach Mars and start its unprecedented geological excavations. So what Mars InSight Lander is going to allow us to do is really map the inside of Mars. This is an important mission, uh, not just for the United States, but an important mission for the world so we can better understand why planets change and ultimately understand even more about our own planet. The lander will put seismometers on the surface to feel the mass quakes. These tremors should reveal how the underground rock is layered. It will also dig deeper into Mars than ever before, nearly 16 feet, to take the planet's temperature. The data will then be compared with Earth to shed further light on the formation of planets 4.6 billion years ago. The InSight mission cost about $814 million. The lander, manufactured by Lockheed Martian Space System, weighs about 358 kilograms and will join five other NASA spacecraft operating on and above Mars. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And that's all we have for you in this edition of News Tonight. Keep watching Rajya Sabha Television.